Hi, my name is Mirko Pinotti and I'm a, I'm a professor of biochemistry at the University of Ferrara. Behind me you can see the department in which I'm working, which is the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Uh, by this video, uh, I would like to walk you through the study we have conducted and that has been recently published in Human Mutation. The topic is a nonsense mutation and the, the point we would like to discuss and we have addressed is the question whether the nonsense mutation are truly and always new mutation. And uh, later, in a, in, a, in a while, I will show you the data and I try to demonstrate that in some cases nonsense mutations are associated to residual expression that in some pathologies can have pathophysiological implications. So I decided to use some slides to make the concept more clear and to show you uh, the essential data supporting the conclusion of our, our paper. So as you can see, uh, I just drawn a picture, a cartoon in which there is a stop mutation and for whom who are not familiar with nonsense mutation, this mutation uh, implies the insertion of a premature top codon into the coding uh, mRNA and in this way uh, the nonsense mutation is associated to the production of truncated molecules that most of the time are not functional and in some cases, especially for, for early nonsense mutation, uh, the, the, this um, change leads to mRNA decay. Uh, in the scientific community, nonsense mutations are considered, commonly considered, null genetic conditions. But uh, we have to consider that the translation termination, it means the stop of the protein synthesis at the nonsense triplets, is not perfect. And in some cases, also with a low efficiency, uh, the ribosome can read through over the nonsense triplet and uh, give rise to a process which is called ribosome read through, where, uh, which uh, uh, can lead to the synthesis of full length molecules, even in the presence of nonsense mutation. Of course, this process is uh, not that efficient, but even traces of full length protein, and especially if they are functional, can have pathophysiological implication depending on the disease we are considering. Uh, our field is coagulation factor deficiency, in which uh, one of the factors involved in the coagulation cascade is, uh, uh, is affected by the mutation. And we have addressed this issue uh, on hemophilia B, which is the disease caused by mutation in the factor 9 gene. Um, in this deficiency, nonsense mutations are relatively frequent, something around 10-15%, uh, and are associated to the most severe cases. And in this uh, disease, even traces of full-length protein can have implication for the um, clinical manifestation and particularly for the development of uh, inhibitory antibodies. So, we decided to, to investigate four different nonsense mutations that have been uh, found in the database and are associated to severe hemophilia B. As you can see, there are uh, four different mutations which are occurring at different points of the cDNA, they are changing, they are at different positions in the protein and they have different sequence. And based on uh, previous data, uh, we know that the sequence and the sequence context of nonsense mutation is an important determinant of uh, the efficiency of a read through. And as you can see, the predicted read through over this mutation is different with the mutation 162, uh, which is expected to uh, undergo to read through with the most um, efficient. So the first uh, Part of the study was addressed in plasma from patients uh, and I would like to remind you that factor 9 is uh, the coagulation factor which is circulating in plasma which makes easier for us to investigate the residual expression um, in the physiological side. As you can see, here are the bands and by western blotting uh, we were able to detect traces uh, you can see in this with the mutation 298 or with the 294 uh, we were able to detect traces of full-length protein. But uh, to corroborate these data, uh, which were obtained in patients, we wanted also to, in parallel, to uh, express all these recombinant variants 
and to check whether in the eukaryotic cells these nocin mutations are also associated to uh, residual levels of full length protein. So we made uh, uh, mutagenesis into the FATO9 cDNA, we inserted the mutation and we expressed these recombinant proteins in the eukaryotic cells. As you can see, in medium we detected uh, level, appreciable levels of protein, but by western blotting we discovered that the majority of these molecules were truncated as expected for non-sense mutation. However, when we focused on the part of the gel in which is uh, the which is corresponding to the side of full length molecule, we discovered that the, the mutation 294, 298, and 162 that I remind you is the mutation with the sequence context more susceptible to rethrow, we were able to detect the full length protein. Uh, at variance, one of these mutations, the 103, uh, even in patient and also in recombinant protein, was not. Uh, giving any, any appreciable trace of full length protein. So, in conclusion, uh, all this data, for the first time for a secreted protein, demonstrated that the ribosome through is uh, occurring in vivo and may account for residual level of full length protein. And this finding, if we consider hemophilia and correlation factor deficiency, can have pathophysiological implications. I would like just to thank all the people involved in this study and Francesco Bernardi with, uh, for um, his illuminating suggestion, Pier Paolo Calusa, Alessandro Canella and Matteo Campioni who performed most of the work in expression study and western blotting analysis and um, the group of uh, Giuseppe Tagariello and Kestaman who provided us the sample from patients and the clinical uh, picture. And last, uh, I would like to thank the agency that funded this, the study, and particularly Teleton, the Fondazione Carife, and, and Ministry of the University. And um, I thank you for your attention. I hope I was clear enough to convey uh, the main message of our study. And um, I hope in the future to present some new data on how this process can, uh, to demonstrate how can this process uh, have really uh, implication for the diagnosis and uh, interpretation of the relationship between the uh, molecular uh, defects and the clinical phenotype.